thank you. That we dare not arrogantly, ignorantly take any credit for ourselves, O oh God. But we know it's because of your goodness unto us, O oh God. Because of your mighty hand, O oh God. That things are as well with us as they are, O oh God. And so, Father, we tell you, thank you, O oh God. Lord God, we thank you for Jesus, O oh God. We tell you, thank you, O oh God, that as the more and more we study your word, O oh God, that we see the great lengths, O oh God, the great depths, O oh God, that you went to, O oh God, to save us, O oh God. Amen. Lord God, for that we are eternally grateful, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God, from the very depths of our souls, O oh God. Now, O oh God, we lift up your people to you, Father. Intercede on their behalf, God. Pray that you would bless them, O oh God. So many sick, O oh God. So many bereaved. Yeah. So many going through so many different trials and tribulations, O oh God. Amen. Father God, you commanded us, O oh God, to cast our cares on you because you care for us. Yes. And so, Lord God, we do that even now, God. We cast our cares upon you, God. We intercede on behalf of those who are going through, oh God. We pray for those who may be too weak to pray themselves, oh God. Lord, look and have mercy right now, God. Lord, bless your church in the name of Jesus. Bless every preacher, Lord God, preaching your word in this church, oh God. Every teacher teaching your word, oh God. Lord God, we just tell you thank you now, oh God, for the preachers of this church, oh God. I tell you thank you personally, oh God, for Reverend Smith, oh God, Reverend DeVille, oh God. I just tell you thank you for their ministries, oh God. Continue, oh God, to uh, pour your treasures, rich treasures of your word into their hearts, oh God, that they may be proclaimed boldly and freely the truths of your word, oh God. I tell you thank you for the opportunities that they have to go and proclaim your word, oh God, throughout not only this city but this state, oh God. And I just tell you thank you for their faithfulness, oh God. Lord, I tell you, thank you for uh, the deacons and leaders of this church, oh God, the trustees and leaders of ministry, oh God. I tell you, thank you for them right now, God. Lord, bless them right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, I intercede on their behalf, oh God, that they would uh, come to know you first more richly, oh God. And Lord, God, more richly the task that you've laid to each of their hands, oh God. Bless them personally, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And then every member of this church, oh God. Lord, bless right now that we may be a beacon light in the dark world, oh God. That we may speak the truth, oh God, in a, a world full of lies, oh God. Have mercy upon us right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Not only this church, but every church, oh God. Every preacher, every pastor, oh God. In the name of Jesus, every Christian, oh God. Now, Lord God, as we come to study of your word on tonight, Father, we pray that you would be with us, oh God. That our time would be fruitful, oh God. But not just to come to know your word, but to come to live with your word. In the very name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. And all my heavenly Father, who have said amen. amen. Come on, good God, and let all the On last week, we began our first by first study of the, gospel, uh, the, uh, the book of Romans. Amen. The book of, of Romans. Now, tonight, I take you all, uh, we're going to continue that um, with a lesson from this subject without excuse. Without excuse. Amen? Romans 1, 18 through 23. We only got a few verses on today. Now, how many of you have been enjoying Bible study over the past few uh, year, uh, year and so? Anybody? <laughs> one motto, it is our mission and motto to go verse by verse through the Word of God. Amen? Um, now, I want to say this. Um, I tell God, thank you that you all enjoy our time together in Bible study, amen? How many of y'all feel like you need just a little bit more time sometimes? You ever feel like that? You ever feel like you need a little more time to say? Well, God has heard your prayer. Amen. Amen. amen? So beginning on next week, which is the first first Wednesday in May, um, we're going. our Bible study will start at 6.20. Amen? Bible study will start at 6.20, starting next week, and it will go to 7.05. So that will give us 45 minutes of study time. Amen? I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. Amen? Anybody excited about that? Amen. Now, I want to say again, that's, that's representative of the leadership of this church. Amen? That's representative of our leaders in this church because um, they, they, they saw my heart on that, and they've been, the, leaders, the, the brother 
them to call me all week, like, what about this time? What about this time? What about that time? Just trying to work it out that's best for the ministry, amen? And that also gives us more time and study. So I tell God, thank you for our brethren, amen? Amen, amen. 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 God bless you all. Now, uh, on last week, if you remember, we, we, we looked at um, Paul, who is writing to the Romans, and he's laying out the case. Uh, the, the whole book of Romans is laying out the case of Christianity. It's a two-part outline, okay? The first part of the outline is salvation worked in, okay? The second part of the outline is salvation worked out. So chapters 1 through 8 is salvation worked in. That means God did it for us, how he saved us, right? And that's what we're going to be talking about for the next foreseeable future. But then chapter 9 through 16 is working out our salvation, how our salvation is worked out. You know how the Bible says, work out your own soul salvation? It doesn't mean that you save yourself, but it does mean that because you are already saved, that there are some things that are show up in your life. Amen? There are some behaviors. And so this church at Rome, they were divided. The Jews and the Gentiles were divided. Amen? And because they were divided, Paul shows us, listen to me, he shows us how the gospel brings harmony where there is division. Do you understand what I'm saying? And family, that's relevant for all of us because we live in a time where we are more divided than ever. We divide over races. We divide over age. We divide over economic status. We divide over everything. Amen? But it shows us how the gospel, you, you, you can already start seeing it working in your mind, can't you? Those verses that we know so well. There is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor nor female. So he, the gospel trumps those dividing lines. Amen? So we call this the good news. But good news is not good news without bad news. Amen? Do you understand that? So you have to, and, and, you know, in order for you to, 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 to know that you need help, the doc, you don't get mad at your doctor for telling you you've got cancer. Amen? But that's how some of us treat the word of God. We don't want to talk about sin. We don't want to talk about um, our, our errors, our faults, and our shortcomings. We don't want to talk how we stand in God's eyes apart from Jesus Christ. We don't want to talk about that. And the reason why is because we live in a feel-good society. We live in a self-help society. But anybody know we don't need self-help. We need God help. Amen. We need God help. All right? So we close out last week, listen, saying verse 17, chapter 1, verse 17 says, For in for in it, talking about the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, um, the just shall live by faith. Now, the righteousness of God is revealed. Now, what does he mean by that? Watch this. Listen. What he means in verse 17 is that the righteousness of God is revealed means not God's righteousness, not God's holiness, but how is it that God can save a man who is sinful? Okay? That, that, that God is just and, we're going to say this later, the justifier. So that means that sin has to be punished. So then how can God be a holy God? How can God be a good God if he doesn't punish sin? Yes. Well, now, Paul, you're telling me that we can be saved and God can give us forgiveness and we can be in a right relationship with God apart from the law. Now, how is that possible? And he says that's what's revealed in the gospel. That at Calvary, God both dealt with sin, and was merciful to the sinner. Amen? So that means that's the righteousness of God, that God does not lose the fact of that he is God because he shows mercy to the sinner. Right? If we were standing in the court of law and the man is completely guilty, you know that he's guilty, and the judge says, you're free to go. You're, it, it, you're about to tie something up. Right? I mean, they, they ride for less. Amen? Right? Why? Because of injustice. So God cannot be God if he doesn't punish sin. You wouldn't call him God. You'd call him unjust. God forbid, but he's not unjust, is he? No. That's the reason why the gospel is revealed that God placed our sin on Christ. And at Calvary, he shed the mercy to the sinner. Amen? All right. So that's what that's what that's it. So the word revealed where we get our word revelations from, the book of Revelation, right? It is ap apocalypse, apocalypto. That's, that, that word apocalypse only means the revealing, something that is hidden now being revealed. So don't get scared of apocalypse. It just means revealing. That's all apocalypse means. Amen? So now he revealed the righteousness of God. Watch this in verse 17. But now tonight, 
He's going to say to us without excuse. Now, what? I want to preface this by saying people will tell you they reject Christianity because they say, well, what about the person who ain't never heard about Jesus? I'm going to answer that tonight. What about the person who ain't never heard about Jesus? What God going to do to them? The person that never heard the gospel. First of all, if someone tells you that, that's the reason why they reject Christianity. That's bogus. And the reason why it's bogus, what does it got to do with you and your soul? You see what I'm saying? You're going to reject the truth because you don't know whether or not somebody else knows the truth. That don't make sense. So you, you give hypotheses in order to, that's what people do. They try to argue their way out of surrendering their life to God, which is what we're going to see tonight in the Word of God. Now watch what he says. At verse 17 says, the righteousness of God is revealed, but now he says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Now, what is what, what is the difference between ungodliness and unrighteousness? Anybody? What is the difference between those? Ungodliness is, is sin in our, in, in our relation to God, or the first table of the law, right? Unrighteousness is our sin in relation to one another, man to man, the second table of the law. You understand that? ungodliness and unrighteousness. That means we have sinned against God, even though all sin is against him. We have sinned against God, but we also have sinned against our fellow man as well. Amen? Now watch this. Now, he's saying the wrath of God, or the judgment of God, that God is just in judging the sinner. This is what he's saying. Now, what he's getting ready to show us is, is, is the judgment of God. Now, the judgment of God is, listen to me, it's not only what happens at the end of the world. At the end of the age, when we stand before God and he talks about our sin, that's not the only time judgment happens. Do you understand that? In fact, judgment is taking place right now. We're going to see that next week. That we're living in the judgment of God. There's the remedial judgment of God where he allows things to happen to bring us back to him. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is the, there is the sowing and the reaping, right? You you, you do bad, and then, then sometimes bad comes, and that is judgment. Amen? So then there is always phases of judgment that happens, and we're going to see that more and more next week. But here he's trying to prove that God is justified in judging the sinner apart from Christ. Now, first he takes, listen, in the next three chapters, he's going to take the person who rejects God, the atheist, is who, who we're dealing with tonight and next week. Then he's going to deal with the, 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 the person who has the law and tries to live under the law, right? And then he's going to conclude by saying, all have sinned, right? Now watch what he says tonight. This is, this is deep. That's why we only got like four verses. But watch this. It's revealed of men who suppress the truth. Now here's the, here's the first thing. The first thing is that most those who reject God, are those who suppress the truth. Uh -huh. Suppress the truth. Write that down. Those who reject God are those who suppress the truth. I want, I want, you, I want to give you a, a picture of what he, what he means by suppressing the truth. You ever, you ever been in, 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 at swimming uh, on the beach or whatever, and you got your, your beach ball, and you try to push that joint under the water? You ever did that? You try to hold the beach ball under the water? What happens when you let it go? It comes flying out, right? And what he's saying is, for you to, for a man to say he doesn't believe God, for a person to live their life apart from God, whether you've heard the, whether you've heard the gospel as we preach it or not, you are not free and clear from God. He says, because all men who reject God have suppressed the truth, meaning they force themselves not to come to an understanding of God. Not to surrender their life to God. And he's going to prove it. Now watch this. Then he says in, in, in verse 19, because, watch this, that which is known about God is evident within them. For God made it evident to them. Watch what he says. That which could be known by God is known to all men. Why? Because he put it in you. Do you hear what I said? He says, he put it in you, and it is in all men. Yeah. The, the, the knowledge that there is a God yeah. is in all men, even the atheists. Wow. Right? It's in all men. God says, I have written my word on their hearts. Now, now watch this. Let, 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 let's prove it. Let's prove it. Let's prove it. Okay? Let's prove it. What does he mean by this? What, what does he mean by 
that which is known. Watch this. Now, I want to say this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say this. That God will judge every man based on the light that they are given. Do you hear me? God is not unjust. But he will, he will judge you based on the light that you are given. And all men have the, these two lights. The, the, the two lights that he's getting ready to show. All men have that. Watch this. This is going to bless you. He says, first of all, there is something on the inside of every man that says there's a God somewhere. What does he mean by that? He's talking about morality. That God has made all men moral. Watch this. You ever seen a man who say that a man or woman say they don't believe God? But if you step on their toe, they get offended. If you steal from them, they'll say you're wrong. If you murder, if, if someone gets murdered in their family, they want justice. Well, who gave you that measuring stick of right and wrong? How did you come to say that right was right and wrong was wrong? How, how, how did you come to that conclusion? If there is no God, how do you define right and wrong? If there is no moral law giver, then where did you get your morality from? Right? Because if because if we if we live in if we live if we can live outside of this which God has put us in us put in us we would be like animals. Right. You ever seen an animal crying because their loved one got got murdered? You ever see an animal offended because you took something from them? You ever seen an animal protested like no, Brian, I ain't doing it. <laughs> you ever see an animal um you know feel like something that you robbed these folks? Of? That's animalistic. They are those who have. No consciousness of God, but all men have morality, right or wrong. Now watch this. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means that if you have morals, if, if, if there is a, a, a right and a wrong, then my question is next, which is what Paul is saying, where did you get that measurement stick from? Who told you that right was right and wrong was wrong? So that means that if there is a morality, if there is a moral law, then there must be a moral law giver. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? If the stop sign says 60 miles an hour, somebody had to make that decision for it to be 60 miles an hour. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody had to say that killing somebody is wrong. Yeah. Else, it wouldn't be in all of our hearts, even those who don't know God, to get offended when murder happens. That's deep, ain't it? Yeah. If there is a moral law, there must be a moral law giver. Now watch this. Now, if there is a moral law giver, then that means he's offended. Because you don't, even have to, you, don't, you don't even have to come to the knowledge of God to know that you have not lived up to your own standards. Yeah. Your own standards of right and wrong. Your basic standards of thou shalt not steal. Not according to the law of Moses, but according to the law that's in our hearts. There is, you, you, you shouldn't steal. Who hadn't stolen before? Don't, don't, don't even answer that. <laughs> Who hadn't lied before? Oh. But lied to you and you get offended. Right. This don't even have nothing to do with mo the Mosaic law. This is just what's inside our hearts. In the heart of man, you don't want to be lied to. In the heart of man, you don't want to, you don't want, you don't want to be killed. In the heart of man, you protect what's yours. In your heart, you do that. Well, where did you get that from? You got it because God put it in your heart. Yeah. If there is a moral law, there must be a moral law giver. And if there is a moral law giver, all of us are guilty. Because we have not even kept our own personal standards. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Now watch this. Watch this. <clears throat> Just look at your morality. If there is morality, you say, this is good. And that means whoever gave the law is chiefly above that which he gave. You understand what I'm saying? He stands above that which he gave. If there is a good, he must be all good. If he gave the standard, right? If there is a justice that we desire, that must be a greater justice. You understand what I'm saying? This is just the front side of it. He's going to add to that in just a minute. And so what he's saying is that in our hearts, we know that there is something greater than ourselves. But the problem is, we suppress the truth. That's what he said. What we do is we take that little that little nugget right there and be like, act like it don't mean anything, right? But have you ever thought about that? If there is no God, then why then why is there law and order? 
from the oldest civilization that there ever has been. There has been law and order. Why? Because the Bible says God wrote it in our heart. Right? And look what he says. That which is that which is known, that, that which could be known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. Yeah. So he says that there's something on the inside of us all that desires God. Yeah. That knows there's something more than just what we see. Yet we suppress it and never try to understand what it is. But then he goes deeper. Watch this. He goes deeper. Watch what he says next. In verse 20, he says, for since the creation of the world, his, God's invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through that which was made so that they are, what? Without excuse. It says, from the beginning of the world, before Moses, all men know that there is a God, the problem is you suppress the truth. Yeah. You're trying to act like you don't see what you really see. Yeah. Can I tell you what you really see? Let me tell you what you see. What you see is a world. You, what you see is days and nights. You see seasons. What does that say? What does season say? Season says this stuff is organized. Yeah. Right? Right? If you went out, if you went out to the beach, you walked on the beach, and when you got to the beach, you saw Braxton written in the sand. You gonna think that just happened? The, the water rolled, the tide rolled in, and when it rolled off, it just happened to be Braxton written in. No, no, no. You are gonna say that is intelligence, that is language, and so therefore, if intelligence is here, it could not have came from chaos, because chaos does not breed intelligence. Intelligence breathes intelligence. Have you ever looked at have you ever looked at the world? See how beautiful it is? Take a breath. Why is it that this is the only planet that's inhabitable by mankind? There's just enough oxygen, just enough nitrogen, just enough in this environment for life to exist. And you're gonna tell me that that didn't come from intelligence? Look at the human body. Look at the skeletal system. The muscular system, the nervous system, all of these things are in place to make you who you are. And that says what? That I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. That means somebody designed me. And if I have been designed, there must be a designer. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? You ain't going to take a pile of wood, throw it up in the house, and have a mansion. Somebody got to build that joint. Why is it that the earth is just enough, uh, just enough away from the sun that we don't always all burn up? And just far enough from the sun that we don't freeze to death? But a few degrees away, we all freeze to death. A few degrees closer, and we all burn up. Do you understand what I'm saying? If the earth was to slow down, just, just its orbit, if, it was to, if its rotation was to slow down just a little bit, we would not have the seasons that we have. One side of the earth would be would completely freeze, and the other side would be so hot that it would be inhabitable. But it's just enough. But you're going to take that and suppress that. You're going to take the fact that, that you breathe in oxygen, exhale carbon monoxide, but the trees use that which you exhale, they use it in order to grow, and they produce that which you need in order to breathe. What? That's intelligence. And you do not get intelligence from chaos. But and for you to for you to miss that, you gotta you gotta do what? You gotta suppress the truth. Watch what it says. What it says is they are without excuse. Now watch this. Look, watch. His invisible attributes. So that means, man, do you see all this? The water stays just so far away. No, 75% of the earth is water. But it just stays so far away. Right? What does that mean? That means there's someone, first of all, is intelligent. Right? He is created. Uh, he has designed. Watch this. But he must be all powerful. Right? He must be more intelligent than man is. He has to be 
more powerful than man is. Because which one of you could have done this? <laughs> y'all yeah, smart, but you ain't that smart. And you got power, but you don't have that much power. So it says, even the atheist, the reason why he is an atheist, because he has suppressed the truth. That which is clearly saying. Do you understand that? Watch this, watch this. Look what he says. And then he says, his eternal power. His divine nature. Now watch this. Even scientists will tell you, scientists will tell you that as they study the earth, that the earth is, is, is getting weaker as it goes. It's losing. It's, it's deteriorating. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and the way that it's deteriorating is that, this is science. You, you Google this if you want to. This, that proves, this ain't got to do with Bible, but this proves God, though. But listen, because it's deteriorating, so and deteriorating in such a way that they say there's going to be a cataclysmic stop time, which means that there must have been a start time. <laughs> which really means in the beginning God created. <laughs> right? But look, watch this. If there is a stop, if there's a start and stop time, watch, listen. If there's a start time of the earth and a stop time of the earth, which the scientists will readily admit, then and, 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 and everything that we see says somebody had to create it, then that means whoever created it must exist outside of that which he created. So then if there is time, he must exist outside of time. Do you understand what I'm saying? So then... It's clearly saying, but the problem is you ain't faking. The problem is you hide from the truth. Any of us do that? It's like that brother you see, you see him, you know, he, done, he, he um, well up in age, done grew up and out and all that, but he still got a letterman jacket on, right? <laughs> so I was a boy, when I was in hospital, like, bro, you just ain't thinking, bro. You need to face the truth. You ain't there no more, though. You caught the game when it touched down. You know, um, thank God, praise Jesus, and take the leather jacket off, dog. It don't even fit now. Right? So they are what? Without excuse. Do you see that? Amen. Watch, watch, watch how deep he goes. Watch this. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks. Now listen. Have, have you, have that, has that ever been you? Have you ever walked outside just with nature and was like, my God? Mm -hmm. You ever seen the sunrise? Sunset, you ever been outside working hard and, the, and, the, and that wind blow right at the right moment? Yeah. And you'd be like, thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. You see, because there's so much to, to, that, that, that says that there is God that you really have to have more faith to be an atheist than you do to be a Christian. Uh -huh. yeah. You gotta have a whole lot of faith to believe that this is just, you know, big bang, big bang, big yeah. bang. Yeah. That uh, two balls of big solid or gases just collided. And out of that came humanity. Do you understand what I'm saying? But even in the Bible, he says it even in, in Psalm, in, in, in Psalm um, 19, 1 through 6. He even says that. He says, for the heavens declare him. Right? It shows his handiwork. Am I right about it? Yeah. And then when you read the Bible, it starts, it starts to make sense. But the Bible says, he says here that, what they're doing is suppressing the truth because even creation itself says that there is a God. You ever, you ever, you ever looked at, um, the, you know, just like some things like waste, right? And, 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 and who eats the animals that eat waste? You know what I'm saying? The animals that, that, that survive off things that we can't survive off, like roadkill, deteriorating flesh. They got animals that exist to eat or eat that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You ever looked at the cows, the cows that we eat? You know, they sit there and chew all, eat all that grass, eat all that grass. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and for some, they don't, they're not carnivorous. They're herbivores. Right? Yeah. And that's what we exist off of. You, you know what? That's what y'all exist off of. But still, right? <laughs> 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 you don't eat no fried chicken breast. Look, so, but even though, look, they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but... They became futile, listen, in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. What does it mean? Listen to what it's saying. What he's saying is, what they did was try to explain away God. Now, how many of you have done that? Even as Christians, isn't that what we do? When we don't want to face the reality of what God is doing, or what God is we try to explain it away. Like, I wasn't beating on them, you know, I was just... 
you know, it's just a bad season in my life. No, bro, you need to come to Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? It says so they try to explain him away. And they, they use science to explain, try to explain God away. But really, listen, do you know that most of our major, almost all of our major universities existed to, to, to explain God? That most of the early scientists, like Newton and, and, and this guy, these guys existed not to try to, de, to, 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 try to uh, debate against God, but they existed to prove God. Princeton, they all existed. Uh, all of these major universities, they existed, illegal, existed to prove God. That science was set about to prove God, and it actually does. And the more and more we live, the more and more discoveries that they make, the more and more it proves, right, what the Word of God says. Once upon a time, they used to say the earth was flat. But the Bible says, David wrote it in his word a long time ago about the, how the earth was circular. You understand what I'm saying? But we try to explain God away. But look, here's the thing. Here's the crazy part. Science means knowledge. That's what the word science means. It means knowing. But God is not science. All knowledge. You see, you understand what I'm saying? Professing to be wise, they became fools. You see? Because the more and more you try to explain away God, the more foolish you, gotta, you, you look. So if you, if you saw a ball just roll across the room right now, how are you going to explain that other than somebody pushed it? There has to be intelligence somewhere. There has to be something greater than what we see for what we see to have existed this long in intelligence, right? In design and all that, right? So the creation... It professes God. And look what it says. They profess to be wise, they became fools. Family, I want to tell you this, that, that the opposite um, of foolish, foolishness is not knowledge. We live in a day and time with young brothers, that's what they talk about. You know, I'm getting that knowledge, man. I'm getting that knowledge. But what you need is wisdom. Yes. You need wisdom to apply that knowledge. Because you can get all the knowledge in the world, and you're just going to be a knowledgeable fool. <laughs> Amen? One of the most brilliant minds recently died. One of the most brilliant men to have, to have ever lived recently died, but he died as a God mocker. Stephen Hawking. He did, I, look, they, they were, he, was, he was debating one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite uh, uh, scientists. Uh, he was debating him, and when they were debating, he misplaced his page they, from, on his notes, and when he misplaced his page, he actually kind of dropped it, and he said, oh my God, that's what he said. <laughs> and the guy's like, who, who are you calling on? <laughs> who is this you're talking to? <laughs> verse 23, our last verse says, watch this, an exchange, watch, look, look, they profess to be wise, but they made themselves fools. Now, don't, don't, don't look at this and talk about them, because this is happening even today. And exchange the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, and of birds, and of four-footed animals, and of crawling creatures. For ages, isn't this what men have done? Men have worshipped the creation. Right? When, when, when the creation declares that there must be something greater than me, we worship that which has been created. But don't point your finger at them, because we do the same thing. We worship our money. We worship our relationship. We worship our children, right? We worship our jobs. We worship that which we created. When, when you look at yourself, you know something greater than you had to be there. Something greater than you created you. Yet you worship that which you have created. You worship that which is lesser than you. You, you, you read the Old Testament. They, they worship snakes in Egypt, right? They, 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 they worship cows. They worship bulls. Remember, they, they, they made the, the big old bull. Bro, how you going to worship something you can eat? <laughs> like this, you know they said that? They, he, this is the God that brought us out of Egypt. No, bro. No, he didn't. Right? So look at how foolish we become when we reject God. It's going to get worse. On next week, he's going to say, our time is at the end. On next week, he's going to say, so what did God do? Here's the judgment word. This is, this is, this is the judgment word for God's remedial judgment, which is what we're going to be talking about next week. It, 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 he says he gave them over. That's what that's 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 what that's what started here. He's going to say that God gave them over. Now, what does that mean? That means he 
He just removed himself. You see, you see, God don't have to kill your family. Do you understand that? God don't have to destroy you. God don't have to do, all God got to do is move himself out the way. Because listen, there is a thing called common grace. And that, whether you're saved or unsaved, you live under the common grace of God. Right? We live under special grace as, as, as saved folk. But there is common grace that the rain, it falls on the just and the unjust. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. But there comes a point in time where God says, you know what? You want to reject me? Okay. Now I'll just go ahead and give you a precursor. I believe that's what's happening in America right now. How can you, how do you end up, and, and forgive me, forgive me for saying this, but how do you end up with certain type of people in the White House? How do you end up like that? I can tell you how you end up, because you divide it over race. You divide over economic. And so when God said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to let you do whatever your foolish heart wants to do. And you have elected an entertainer. You have an elected a man that will do foreign policy on Twitter. Do you understand what I'm saying? That will fire career politicians on Twitter. That his strategy is, I'm not going to tell you, I'm just going to surprise you. Are you serious? Now, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about y'all saying y'all ain't going to vote because Hillary ain't meet y'all standards. Or whoever else you was going to vote for didn't meet your standards. See, that's the judgment of God. He gives you over to a mind that can't even understand good and bad. Basic wisdom. God sometimes will remove himself. Listen, listen to me. When you see sin get worse and worse and worse, folk, folk are just rampant, living any kind of way in their sin. You want to know why? Because God has removed himself. It ain't because they are just that wicked. No, it's because God says, you want to do it? Go ahead and do it. I won't even give you a mind that can recognize the foolishness and the idiocy of what you are doing. He will just remove himself. And listen to me, family. Even for the believer, he may not remove his grace, but he will do some things that will allow you to come to your... Remember, again, it's called what? Remedial judgment. Remember when you got to college, you took the entry exam or whatnot, and when you got, took the entry exam uh, and certain, uh, 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 certain classes you didn't quite measure up, right? So what did they do? They put you in remedial math or remedial whatever. What was that? It was, not to, it was not to just punish you, but it was to bring you back to the level that you needed to be at. And isn't that where we are? Yeah. I believe the reason why there are so many in Bible study right now is because when you look at the world, you be like, no, 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 something is wrong with this. Right? I need to know more about my God. I need to be more about, I need to know more about you. I need to live out that which I say I believe. Yeah. Because when you look at the world, you know something is wrong. Yeah. Right? When you look at the community, you know something is wrong. When look kids talk to grown folk, any old kind of, you know something wrong. Yeah. Folk can just walk up in the place and shoot up everybody. You know something wrong. Yeah. God has given us hope. Our time is it? Yeah. 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 On next week, remember family, listen to me. On next week, our new study time starts next week. Amen? First week, first Wednesday in May, Bible study will begin at 620. Okay? And it will end at 705. What that will do is it will give us 45 minutes of study time. Amen? So we tell God, thank you for that. Amen? Amen? Lord, we tell you, thank you for your word. Lord, your word that teaches us that no one, oh God, is, is free from your wrath, oh God. Or ultimately, God, free from needing you, God. That's what this is all about. It proves that we all need you, God. Yeah. So all of us, at some point in time, and maybe even now, suppress the truth that you revealed to us, oh God. Have mercy upon us, oh God. We pray for the saved and the unsaved even now, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Lord, bless our, our business meeting that we shall have on tonight. Be with us that our time will be fruitful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Family, we're asking that if you uh, if you have business meetings starting out, family, business meetings starting out.
that we, we tell you thank you for visiting with us, and we ask that you would come back. Yeah. All right, so transition over to